You are done. Or else you'll do what? I will kill your wife. I will kill your son. A few moments later. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I quit. Ah! Can I quick word with you? Uh, kiss my ass. Just type a memo of that and send it around. Ah! <laughs> I quit. What's up, guys? Boy, Benny. I'm not really that fun of a person. Okay, I I, I work a lot. I got three kids. And then I sleep. That's pretty much it. That's the rest of my day. Hopefully some exercise in between there. Not a lot of time to Netflix and chill. When I get time to Netflix and chill with my wife, who I've been married to for seven years, I'm probably going to be watching a Dave Chappelle stand-up special. The last time that I sat down and like watched Netflix for over an hour was the Dave Chappelle stand-up special. And every time Dave Chappelle has a stand-up special, I go, going to watch that. Click gonna watch it because I laugh my ass off every single time. I've never been disappointed. I really like Dave Chappelle and I think he's getting much better with age like a fine wine. And so I'm a big Dave Chappelle fan and I'll put everything on hold to sit and watch. And his last one was so, so good. Uh, I've been a Dave Chappelle fan for a long time. I'm sure you have too. The guy's a, the guy is possibly the most talented comedian of his generation. If you have been a Dave Chappelle fan for a while, you'll probably remember the Chappelle show, which is uh, the best sketch comedy show uh, in existence. And before we had memes, we just had Chappelle show quotes. I mean, it was like a permeated society. It was the biggest show in the world. And you will probably remember how that show, which was so popular, abruptly stopped. And then Dave Chappelle disappeared. Now, we know that Dave Chappelle, like, had a mental break, kind of, and, like, went to Africa. Didn't even tell his wife here. Like, look at this headline from the celebrity tabloids. Dave Chappelle once disappeared to South Africa without even telling his wife. Dave Chappelle turned down $50 million and flew to South Africa. He said it was the best decision for him. He left without telling his wife. In 2005, Dave Chappelle walked away from his highly successful sketch comedy series, The Chappelle Show, and disappeared. The move surprised comedy fans. It also surprised his wife. Chappelle once revealed that the decision to leave the show behind and go to Africa completely shocked his wife. Why the hell would he do this, right? Many people questioned, obviously, um, you know, mental stability. How can you walk away from $50 million? I mean, that's crazy. Uh, but he said he could not emotionally continue the show. I wasn't walking away from money. I was walking away from the circumstances. Uh, when you're a guy that generates a lot of money, people have vested interests in controlling you. Wow. Uh, what's that about? That's really interesting. So this is what Dave Chappelle said at the time. Uh, this is, uh, again, this is an article from back in 2016. So this is all like the, the, the reporting from the time. According to Chappelle, he felt suffocated. As he worked on a series and reached a point where he had to leave, he decided to walk away from the deal and go to South Africa, live really far away, away. And he didn't even tell his wife. I didn't tell, I, it was like, I didn't tell my wife. It was like, I'm not telling her until after I'm gone, which was a mistake. It, but it wasn't a crazy mistake. It's just uh, dudes. Uh, okay, his wife forgave him and so on. My wife's still a little salty, he said. Okay, so, so what is it that causes you to walk away from $50 million? To walk away from your wife, who Dave Chappelle I, I, like clearly loves, right? If you watch his comedy, um, and he has a couple kids, he has his children with this woman. I mean, I think he's been happily married for like three decades, right? Dave Chappelle is a, a good dude. This really always interested me. This line: "People have a vested interest in controlling you," he said. I wasn't walking away from money. I was walking away from the circumstances. So who's trying to control Dave Chappelle? Well, uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, on Roseanne's podcast, of all places, uh, Roseanne also, again, like a legendary comedian in the American you know, comedy zeitgeist, uh, she had on Jim Bauer, who's close friends of uh, Dave Chappelle. Jim Bauer here. He's, a, he's been on Joe Rogan's show. He's, again, a legendary comedian and a uh, really funny dude, right? But these comic circles, especially if you're like, big time in the comic circles, they're very, very small. And so Jim Bauer says that Dave Chappelle, who's close friends with him, uh, said that an elite group of people sat him down to correct him about the comedy he was doing. And then he vanished. And he no longer communicated with anybody. He was visited and he was freaked out. That's what they said. He was visited and he was freaked out. My heart stopped for a second. So what, what is this? Let's listen. Let, let's go ahead and listen to this. Obviously, let's let the comics speak uh, for their firsthand experience. What the hell happened to Dave Chappelle? When we were, we were filming, have, we were filming a movie and he also had a lot of pressure 
Yeah. Uh, from HBO and uh, <laughs> or, or not HBO, Comedy Central Comedy and all this Central, shit, right? The worst bunch of people on earth. Horrid. Mm-hmm. He then, while he was on the show, when it was blowing up. Uh, and we were, were you, remember the Aspen Comedy Festival? I don't know yeah, that was fun. I did that too. He came there and he was freaked out. Yeah. I said, what's, what's going on? And all I could say is he was visited. Yeah. That's oh, what shit. I think too. And when he told me who visited him, I still, I, my heart stops for a oh, second. Shit. I'm like, get the and I'll never forget, he went, you believe me, right? You believe me, Jim, right? And I could, I could, he's like, they came to me. Hmm. And he said the names. I'm like, get them. And what happened? And then all of a sudden, he went to Africa. Yeah, that's what I remember happened. So, yeah, that's super duper creepy. Obviously, Dave Chappelle, uh, you know, th- whatever happened in that I- instance, like, creeped out Dave Chappelle enough for him to flee the country. To tell Oprah later that he doesn't want to be controlled. So what are the controlling parties? What are the controlling interests in Hollywood? Has Dave Chappelle then, as he reignites his career, gone directly at those controlling interests? Check this out. Netflix transgender workers are set to stage a walkout over Dave Chappelle. Do you remember this from 2021? Yeah, 2021. Where Dave Chappelle told jokes, right? Dave Chappelle told jokes and there was an entire contingent of people at Netflix that said, you're not allowed to tell those jokes. We're going to walk out. Thankfully, Netflix stood by Dave Chappelle and continues to release very successful Dave Chappelle comedies. And as far as we know, Dave Chappelle hasn't been silenced at all by Netflix. And so kudos to Netflix for standing by uh, comedy, right? Which it was under attack. Was this part of who was trying, was this part of who was trying to control Dave Chappelle? We, I, I guess we don't know until Dave Chappelle says so. Jim Bauer and Roseanne said so. Right? Because you assume that there's like an, there's an agenda, there's a social agenda that is being pushed in Hollywood, and that political and social agenda is being pushed by the powerful people who control everything, and they want the people who have fame, like Dave Chappelle, to continue their agenda, right? To reinforce their agenda. Now, we're starting to see and hear this, obviously, you know, everywhere. Dave Chappelle has broken from that. Dave Chappelle famously went to hang out in Congress with Republicans, right? Talk about UFOs and stuff with Anna Polina Luna. She's a dear friend of us. Like Dave Chappelle is clearly somebody who's not controlled, right? And if you listen to the jokes he makes, there is no way that Dave Chappelle's holding back. No way. (laughs) He's offending absolutely everybody and nobody is safe, right? And and so he's a pure, he's a purist of a comic. But little by little, we're starting to see little uh, like breaks inside of the Hollywood facade. Matthew McConaughey says that there's an initiation process in Hollywood. What is this about? Matthew McConaughey said in a recent interview that there was an initiation process in Hollywood. He wished people had told him about it. My star meter has been higher. My star meter has been lower. I've won Oscars and I've been arrested playing the bongos naked. Oh, <laughs> why was Matthew McConaughey playing the bongos naked? Was this part of an initiation process? Matthew McConaughey apparently was just stating this like an initiation process, I guess, as like just breaking into Hollywood, but talking about the process nonetheless. Have a listen. Look, I've had an incredibly, I've had an incredible amount of goodwill in my 30 something years in this industry. Um, I, like anyone, have had my ups and downs. My star meter has been higher. My star meter meter has been lower. I have won Oscars. I've been arrested playing the bongos naked. I have had poor performances i have had you know i've had good showings i've been better in some places and worse than others overall i'd like to think well i know for a fact that overall the industry from media and people i believe have had an inherent goodwill for me not overly supportive the the industry did not keep me from figuring out my own initiation into the industry, which everybody in this industry has to initiate themselves. There's a lot of things you learn 10 years after being in Hollywood that you go, well, why didn't they tell me that in year two? Because there's an initiation process. There just is. You gotta learn it on your own. No publicist can tell you, no producer can tell you, no director can tell you, nobody, you have to figure it out on your own. You get tips, but you gotta figure out the BS, cut the wheat from the chafe along the way. So yeah, the initiation process, many people are talking about, you know, situations like the, this at the Oscars, right? With John Cena naked at the Oscars. 
Uh, you know, many, many people called this a humiliation ritual, right? So that John Cena gets more fame and gets more movie parts. Okay. That, that, that's what, that's what various people are, are straight up saying. This is, you know, this is a humiliate, this is a humiliation ritual. Cat Williams was damn right. But it was Cat Williams who actually radicalized me. I've never heard anybody speak this clearly about Hollywood and about the people who control it. Cat Williams talking about how this, <laughs> Maybe the same group of people came up to him and offered him fame and fortune um, to do certain things, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll just let Cat take it away. Cat Williams talking about the humiliation and initiation rituals for the rich people who control Hollywood. Yourself into thinking there isn't one, but the evidence will be clear. So like when I, when I be like, uh, oh, these guys are wearing dresses. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, he keeps talking about people wearing dresses. No, it's, that not, is it's, a weird thing. it's not like that. Look at it from a different way. Look at it. Show me one person that ever wore a dress in Hollywood unsuccessfully. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you understand what a ritual is. Mm.